<laughs> Meme Shy is not. You came to the wrong party, dude. <laughs> yeah, he, he needed something else from the top deck. Now he's forced to swipe and then keep off the groove next turn, maybe. But he cannot play Loot Hoarder for two turns. So that's a card you want to play as fast as possible in this deck. So it's pretty bad, the, the draw, even if it looks good. I, must I don't know why he did that first. Because. May, 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 oh, maybe yeah, he wanted. Makes sense, kind of. He wanted his opponent to trade. It's it's pretty much like a stronger move in a way, um, arguably. I guess it's close. I think swipe was better. But I think um, Gianno, he definitely wants to consider using using this Wrath as a cycle and not a three damage, just because his, his uh, hand size is so low. Um, he has a couple options. He can Wrath probably here, power trade yeah. off the two. If he does probably. that, if he does that, Nimsh loses a lot of advantage because he will be forced to play the swipe now, or or can just ignore that. But I still think Swipe was better if you wanted to click the whole board. If you wanted to just kill one Sun Fury, this was the better play. Well, Swipe wouldn't have removed the other Sun Fury anyway. Well, he would remove it uh, yeah. next turn with Keeper. But now he, but cannot... now he can Swipe next turn too, so same thing. It would yeah. be based on the assumption that he would have the ability the to trade yeah. it directly. Yeah. So then, in a way, you would force both Sun Furies to attack into the Keeper, and then you get more value out oh, of that. Oh, wow. Directly. He is just. Oh, my God. He didn't wow. even cycle with a hand that small. In that situation, pressing his advantage, man. Push for yeah, damage. Yeah, okay, he's pushing, <laughs> pushing for damage. With here. two Sun Fears. we don't see that very often in Druid nowadays uh -huh. either. Well, maybe he thinks that uh, if Nimsh had swipe, it was logical to play the swipe. Like I tell you that, and wow. uh, probably Nimsh will not play swipe. Yeah, yeah, you for sure play the Drake here with the swipe. That's it's not so that tempting the swipe, but I agree. Well, you, the thing is, even if he trades both the, the creatures the Drake, for the Drake, it's still itself. better. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's better to keep so. the swipe. But next turn. Giano can get some advantage by trading the 2 1 here and getting rid of it so he can play around swipe if he wants to, of course. He can just not play around swipe. Yeah, but he's still fighting from a big card dis uh, yeah, deficit. Giano says a keeper, so you can trade the 2 1 and use a keeper. That's pretty decent. If it was me, I would not play around swipe because I would assume he doesn't have it. If he had it, it was probably better, in my opinion at least, to play the swipe if he wanted to clear the board. And then you would have gotten swiped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Probably. Oh, it's funny how some of those things work, though. Yeah. See what he picks up. Oh, 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 oh. oh my god. An immediate I response. Guess he, now you just ride the tempo. He already yeah. made the tempo oh, move. Might as well do it again, right? Sure. This will um, cost him. He can remove. Nimsh can remove the whole board. With... <laughs> That's true. That's true. But, you know, you can't really pass it up. So, not playing around the card you assume your opponent doesn't have because he didn't play it in a good time will, made, will make his game. Yeah. Actually, uh, swip, uh, turns it on its head because of it. Yeah. That's funny. So playing around stuff and assuming he doesn't have a card because he didn't use it at the best time <laughs> loses you the game. It's pretty interesting. Well, it's sometimes you're thinking a little too advanced and some you got to yeah. go return to basics in a way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of trying to mind game yourself. Yeah. Now you should uh, hero power and the uh, swipe, I think, to click the whole board. Yeah, it's hard to see another move here. You can just force of nature and <laughs> clear <laughs> almost all the boards. <laughs> I guess. Or you can just swipe the Argent Commander and play Loot Hoarder. No. Mm. No, that is the best I play. feel like that's a little inconsequential. If you're playing the Loot Hoarder, you might as well just play the Artist Quarter Challenge. But. Yeah, this is good. Good for Nimsh, bad for Giano. We'll see what Giano picks up. Maybe Ancient of Lore could turn things up. Mm. Yeah, an ancient, ancient of Lore would be perfect. That would be a big pickup. Oh. This is bad. <laughs> yeah, this is bad. That's why it's so important during that turn to cycle his Wrath, because yeah. He'd be one know, it's, so, it's so easy to to get a hand like this when your hand is just Keeper and Innervate or something. Yeah, like, imagine have the Ancient of Lore is this next card. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, he would have been able to have it. I mean, I, I, it's a little idealistic, but you have to play for those percentages. Well, it doesn't have to be any channel, just anything that's like a... Like, you really don't want to be keeping people in the face, you know? It's like, just any creature. It's, a waste. it's just anything almost. Like a bear, you know, drake, whatever. He All played right. around the, the second keeper. He could usually just Druid of the Claw trade. Oh, <laughs> wow, look at that. Is. The next card there was Ancient is. of Lore. It's there still it better is. now than, than never. Yeah, yeah but it's never. not that good now. 
If he plays Sentry to the floor... He's not, probably not going to be able to take out the Violet Teacher. But he has yeah. to take yeah. it. Heal. Whoa. Whoa. No, no way. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no He's like, no. no. Way. That's not going to happen. Okay, Why would he heal for four, like... Oh, he, he picks up a rat. Just, he just had... Okay, so that, means, that means he can take out the... The Violet Teacher. The Violet Teacher. And you should, because if... if this turn you get Power of the Wild, I think you almost just lose. Or right? if you leave right. that board and then Power of the Wild. Because yeah. then the, the Loot Hoarder and the Argent Squire trade really efficiently. And then he can just go oh. for the card draw if he wants to. He can go for the card draw. The card draw on what? On the Loot Hoarder. On the Loot Hoarder or Argent Squire and then trade with the Keeper on the other one. And just ignore the Violet Teacher. And if he doesn't have Power of the Wild, it's really good. But it's not that good of a play. I think I agree with Strife though, the Violet Teacher represents yeah. way too much, especially coming into the later parts of the turn where you yeah. draw to combo and things get too crazy. And your Keeper yeah. actually doesn't even get taken out here. It actually still survives at one, so... Yeah. Well, Nimsha's... what? The combo? He might even drill into an Innervate and do, be able to double combo? <laughs> oh my goodness, that'd be <laughs> bananas. At that's, still, point, that's still two turns from now because he needs uh, to ten, 12 yeah. mana, but... Okay, so an crazy. another option is maybe use a Savage Roar here um, because you have, because you, you have know you, you can you have two. So what you can do is charge Savage Roar, trade your um, Loot Hoarder for the Bear. I mean for the five five, use your Hero Power on the two one. Although that means you die to the combo. So you can't use. Uh, yeah. Uh, you have to use the Druid of the Clove Charge to get rid of the five five. What? You cannot lose that. You cannot use the Loot Hoarder to get rid of the four five. Oh yeah, that's not. Big it's one either. damage yeah, off. Yeah. You can just uh, Druid of the Clove Charge. Um, Savage Roar Charge, and um, just trade the board as best as you can. Probably do it off the claw in 5-5. Five five. Um, you don't want to use the face, because you, d you drop to 14. So you should just Argent Squire into 2-1 and loot for their face, but that's not such a good play. At yeah. some point, I think it's not worth playing around. Force uh, of Nature is pretty good. He wants to see what he draws. Maybe he doesn't have time to end the turn. I think he should not have played around the combo because there's only two cards in this situation. I think you can assume that the other player is only running one, one of each, so it's not that likely. Um, yeah, not playing around the combo is better in this situation. But if yeah. he had combo, we would be like, oh wow. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, he still has that ancient of lore. Now Giano is in really good position. Yeah. And Nimsh was in a good position, so ancient of lore can change things yeah. a lot. Also with that innervate, and now you—it's pretty obvious. You also, do it's just pretty hard to have the combo when they have exactly just two cards in their hand. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Probability like, uh, yeah, is still not that high. Well, yeah. it's three cards. You can top deck it yeah. always. So. True. <laughs> Speaking of which, one of the pieces of the combo. So again, both players lost a little bit of advantage by playing around some stuff their opponent didn't have. Yeah. But you normally should do that because if they, for example, maybe they saw the 27 damage game. Yeah. He didn't play around that one fringe pace possibility with 24 yeah. damage Leroy combo. Yeah. And then he had the three from the Farseer. But I mean, say say now, right? Um, like, you you make a weak play and you lose your board, and now you're going to die to combo anyways one turn later because you you ended up, you ended the turn with just the one one. Sure, your follow-up wasn't that great either. Yeah, exactly. So I, I understand what you're saying. And I think from this position, if you're Nimsh, you, no. you have to stay kind of consistent with your decisions, which unfortunately plays into a greater percentage now that he's drawn two cards to lose. So in this in this scenario, he has to either change direction drastically and then risk just falling behind, or yeah. he has to kind of play consistent. There are little plays that he can do now. Ancient of Lord Heal or draw two cards. I don't know why he should he draw cards. Or he can just combo and clear that, but it's not worth it to use combo to clear an Ancient of Lord that already done his uh, part by drawing the cards. He wants to get his opponent at 22 HP so he can uh, top deck on Innovate and uh, deal 22 with the combo. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. Oh, that's not a All bad right. draw. Yeah, he still can officially remove and start putting on pressure and get He's closer really to good. the combo. You just yeah. want to get closer to the combo at this point. Swipe Pure Power Yeti, probably. He can do that. that. That's the best play, probably. Because you still don't die. To the, you still don't die to the combo. Or I guess he would die to some kind of crazy like innervate, innervate. Double, but that's not worth. Or playing force around of that. nature. Well, I think that force of nature and uh, Yeti is better because we saw Nimsh's hand, and if he do if he top decks innervate and he, and uh, Giano trades, he loses the game. Giano. Well, we saw his hand, but yeah, <laughs> well, he can't see it. Can't if he played around the swipe at that point, I think he can play around this. He didn't. Okay. So now Nimj needs a uh, innervate top deck to win the game instantly. <laughs> well, let's I don't see. Know. Do you believe? 
That would be has, has Nip so Nip like. Uh, he already used one interview. So it's one more interview. Yeah. And what are the chances? Win. I think it's probably one in the realm of possibility. Oh, oh my god. Disappointing. <laughs> Very disappointing. Oh, this is tough now. Nine power on board. Um, it's not even easy to use the combo to take this out because it's hard to. It's kind of hard at this point to use chunks of four, 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 and two, right? You have mm -hmm. to do, do it pretty inefficiently here. But I guess you might have to combo this out. If he just plays the two creatures. He can combo it out, but if he combos it out, he has no way to win the game. So he needs to keep the combo and just hope his opponent doesn't have the combo. And his opponent doesn't have the combo. Oh, yeah, that's, that's probably the best play right now. If he uses the combo now, he loses all his damage potential and he will not win the game, trust me. Yes, he loses his win condition uh, so, and, and goes from like a 10% win to 0%. Yeah. <laughs> and he doesn't want to do that again. And it doesn't seem like he'll be able to die this turn. Oh. Savage Roar was... Savage Roar off the Wild Growth. He can Wild Growth, yeah, yeah. and get Savage. Wild growth, uh, Savage Roar off the Wild Growth, he can. It's really close. Is that enough? He has a 8 plus 9, 17, so he's off by 1. Uh, hero power. Hmm? So you're no, saying I'm talking about Gianna needs oh, one more damage. Oh, I thought you meant if he Savage Roars right now. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, Savage Roar is not enough. But you, you, you will to... So he has 9, 3, 15. Savage Roar yeah, on empty right. board right now is uh, too off. Well, 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 if he plays Wild Grove and gets Savage Roar, he has Keeper of the Grove exactly little. Oh. So now if he had Savage Roar again, he would uh, have missed the little. Uh, he needs to clear everything here, but Yeah, he now he clicks everything and he will probably... Nimsh will use the combo now, he has to, but Either still, way. that's not too good. It's interesting to see whether he's going to keep her for the, for the face or just wild growth. I think that this was a little misplay because yeah, if, if, you played, if you played wild growth and got the savage roar, it was instantly win. Whoa. Why doesn't he want to play it? Yeah. What? There's no reason to keep this wild yeah, growth here yeah, at this point. Yeah. He had to play it first. you have like a card that synergizes with it, like Violet Teacher. Or yeah, Gadget Zan to draw an extra card. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, basically he had to play that first because if he played it first and got uh, savage roar, it was yeah, instantly yeah. lethal. Yeah. So and then he could play it. Oh. Oh. oh my god. <laughs> this game. Now he's forced to use the combo and we lose a lot of tempo and we you guys. Oh we oh, cut he off. Really for a used, he already used yeah. one force of nature, correct? Um, um So like this would be his last so. ability to use it. Yeah, he used the force of nature, I think. Okay, so oh did. man. I guess he can play his squire. So he still has a creature next turn, but yeah. Just Not exactly board. the most opposing <laughs> board on turn 12. Yeah, he needs a lot to get back into the game. I think that he still, he still has one engine of lore. Yeah, right? that's what I wanted to say. So maybe he runs Ragnaros or some. Now he doesn't know if he should trade or not. He didn't die to combo, so he should just trade with the face and assume his opponent does not have the combo. What is that extra two damage going to earn you, though? I especially if he's given up his combo pieces. Well, yeah, it's it puts it, you within range. Counts. It puts you within range versus you put him at, at seventeen. So basically, you're giving up. You're trading. You're getting two extra damage and taking five. Um, it's hard to say what's better because you're in such a bad position at this point. Sure. Like either one doesn't seem that great. Yeah. You don't need to do your opponent any favors, though. Yeah, that's true. And in this game, we can see how Ancient of Lord can turn a game around. And playing around stuff. Well, so there is the combo, so it wasn't the right oh. to trade right there. Or but with his help. Well, yeah. Still, Scenarius and <laughs> game over. Game, yeah. He cannot do anything to Scenarius. I'm not really sure if he used the other uh, Force of Nature. If he did use the other Force of Nature, it's really over. It, it seems like this deck um, that Gianna's playing, there's only one, like no, one not, combo. Not Gianna, Nimsh. Yeah, we were wondering whether or not Nimsh had used his force, first Force of Nature already, or he has Oh, one. okay. Yeah, Nimsh used both. Yeah, already. Giano plays only one combo because he yeah. plays more rampish and he doesn't have space for both combos like Nimsh does. So in tokens really you have space, but in that sort of deck you don't. And now he will have to taunt that. Yep, has to taunt, has to get rid of these tree out. But still can't really do much. He's still at the mercy of basically what his opponent has. And Giano looks like he's in prime position to send this into game three, which Nimsh would have to rely on his road. Well, I think he lost oh, Nimsh right. already. That's weird. Yeah, he lost mathematically. He can't do anything. Even with that druid of the claw. He just I combos. I think he probably had a little bit better move, which is to use your Savage Roar here. And then you can charge him for six or something. Still. Oh, doesn't really 
matter. Yeah, because his opponent has the combo. Yeah, yeah, it's so right. it's kind of inconsequential. All it need is one minion to survive. <laughs> yep. All right, so Giano's going to move on and tie up the series. Nipsh goes to game three, and we'll have to rely on his Miracle Rogue. Well, maybe Backspace. We don't know. That's oh, that is true. Or maybe Tapo Rogue. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Maybe Murloc, Miracle Rogue. I saw him playing that at DreamHack a couple times with fun trolls. Probably it's Miracle because if it was um, Backspace, um, he wouldn't have used it. So uh, he would have used it probably in the first one. I think Backspace has a lot of chances versus Freeze. He's a better deck than Miracle. I sure. like I like Backspace versus, base -base versus Freeze. I usually lose to Backspace because they have a lot of chargers. Retroactively instead of uh, preemptively because you can't stop charges with freeze. So yeah, I, yeah, and it makes so sense. yeah. Say that's miracle rogue. Oh, okay. catch so, in the coin. Well, in preparation and backstab and backstab. Well, I would even I don't know if I would keep a Zoid Rake or not. It's really a good card versus Druid. Oh my God! Look, look at Giano's expression. Mm. He's like, oh, I lost this already. No, what, what does he have in a starting hand? Yeah. Double, yeah. double yeah. force of nature. Oh, double force of no. oh, nature. No. <laughs> That's a disaster. Nimsh gets almost the perfect draw. He's like, mm, not bad. <laughs> not bad for Nimsh. Asian style. <laughs> Nimsh. I mean, his curve is actually turning out okay. Yeah, he he's. Three draws. Yeah, if he top decks an a Yeti and then an Azur Drake. Then you just combo. <laughs> sure. <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then innovate for the combo. <laughs> That would be awesome. Sounds good to me. So let's just do that. Well, with this kind of deck, you need to win very fast, seeing him yeah. his hand. Like, if you don't win until... If you don't put your opponent very low and then have in every combo, you will lose. Look at mm -hmm. Nimshi's yeah, hand. Yeah. Yeah. It's Basically, one of the best. there's a miracle coming out next turn for sure. Next, this is weird. Next I mean, turn? Not next turn. <laughs> it's it's not like, weird. This is new. I can't see Basically, that. Turn there's going to be a miracle this game by Nimsh. This and, is, and that miracle turn is going to be insane. I think so. this play is very good. Mm -hmm. Playing Talos and backstabbing the 2 3 is really a strong play. It's better than using Shiv or Hero Power. You, you basically get value out of Talnos immediately, and you also draw a card, which you might need, mm -hmm. which might be the Conceal. That well, also, a big thing is, like, you're kind of forcing a Druid to use your Hero Power on 3. Yeah. Not really forcing, but it's awkward to leave up Blood Mage, so... You know, instead of Harvest Golem, he has to make a decision between yeah. Harvest Golem and Hero Power. I would power. play Harvest Golem. Yeah, I would play Harvest Golem for sure, too, but it is kind of awkward. Especially with the Shiv up, he can, say, Shiv at the Spell Power, and maybe even trade the har Harvest Golem or something. So. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. And everything cantrips for itself, yeah, so you're not exactly. losing much momentum. Exactly. I don't think he has a way to deal with the Harvest Golem. He needs the, the poison. Well, he can deal with half of it. Half right, of it is Shiv. not enough. Then so. Hero Power next Well, turn. the way he can deal with it is Shiv face, top deck, backstab. <laughs> and, uh, I guess. And if you're feeling really move. lucky, here he is one backstab. Yeah. Oh, well, that, that, that's the only way. way. You're, you're not going to coin out the hero power, but it doesn't matter. You don't have to deal with that in one turn. Just yeah, yeah. take this out, and the next turn take out your hero power, I think. Yep, sure. Ah, second prep, not bad. <laughs> now we should see if Nimsh is patient, or if he wants to rush things up. If he wants to rush, rush things up, he will just play coin auctioneer, prep something, <laughs> prep something. Yeah, yeah. If he is the patient type, he will just play auctioneer, coin, get mm -hmm. one card of the coin, maybe the conceal. Also, you get the mana too. Right. Yeah. I think it's way better to keep your good hand until turn five or six. I agree. Sure. There's no reason why you needed this turn. Like this board is so little, you know, just hero power here. Yeah. That way you have a that we get to make the hero power before the gadgets down as well. Even though. Um, you only have a 1-1 one, one dagger now as good as a 1-2, because then the you can play yeah. poison, but it's still something. I think it's okay, too, because on turn 4, Druids try to start making power moves, and then they essentially just trade hero powers for turn 4, and that's okay with yeah. you, because you're just waiting for turn 5. So in this respect, Nimsh is perfectly okay playing patient, since he, his opponent wasted 2 mana as well. Oh my okay, god. a good draw. A good draw, but <laughs> yeah. if he had an Yeti, previ the previous turn it yeah, would be... Yeah. Oh, oh, he's getting very that's, close. That's getting good, yeah. Yeah. His hand looks good, but it's too seeing, slow. He hasn't had seeing Nimsh's hand, I'm just like, yeah. he needs a lot. To it's just Nimsh's hand is too good right now. Now Nimsh if he top decks Conceal, <laughs> Sap is, re is really good also. Because he prep Sap this. Yeah, if, if you prep Sap that, he had to he has to use all his turn to play the Zoid Rake again, and that's just way well, too also much. Also, you need to kill the 
the Gadget Sand. Sand too. Yeah, you, you cannot the kill. You cannot do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I would even coin for nothing, just because you can you, you basically trade coin for a card, and if that card is a uh, spell, you shift can seal, fan of knives, whatever, even uh, deadly poison, you can just use that and continue the cycle. So that card right, is not a spell. Now he, it's up to him if he wants to risk or not. He can risk with playing Cold Blood, and he also can risk with playing Preparation into something, and uh, top deck that something. I think he has a lot of outs. He has one more Shiv, one or two de um, Fan of Knives. He hasn't played Fan of Knives either. I, we don't know if he plays it, or uh. if he plays one or two. So, <laughs> okay. Wow, all right. He should BGH. have, he should have Cold Blood it oh. before. If he Cold Blood it before, so if that was pretty... A pretty big mistake because if you want to use cold but use it before and then you can prep something else yeah for two mana because there are more two mana cards than one mana card with this play he practically wanted only conceal or sinister strikes if he, if he plays that so if he doesn't play sinister strikes this was a really huge risk and that if he wanted to take it he should just cold blood first and then prep the other cards he had a lot more chances shiv and the uh, fan of knives so i think um John is going to have to innervate at the rack here. Like, you can swipe and then hear power of the face, but then you have no board after. And as Druid, you really need to get some board against Miracle. Mm -hmm. You can't just, like, remove their creatures, kind of. Stop the BGH was the dream yeah. after Azul Drake. <laughs> it would have been pretty disgusting. Not as disgusting as double, as double prep coin auctioneer, though. Well, but he didn't have yeah, anything didn't else. Have... So yeah. his good hand was practically denied by his draws. He also need a good, good follow-up. Hmm. Well, this doesn't have uh, the easy way to remove this Drake. Nope. So now that he lost his co his own only cold blood, because I assume he doesn't play two if he plays first here and double sap, so you, ha don't, you don't have space for two. Oh, uh, he has exactly 18 damage uh, burst, so he needs to get his opponent at 18 be before being able to win. And I don't see him very good this game. From that perfect hand. Now he needs to burst his opponent, but he cannot burst his opponent because he doesn't have anything to burst him with. Right. So, I think Gianna is really favorite in this game. If he just towns up and survives. Yeah, he has a Cenaris as well. So he has ways to kind of get late game taunts too. And Sun Furies is... Also, it looks, looks like Gianna does have double force. Yeah. yeah. Also, yeah, he has double force. I, I didn't... No, you saw we played only one How combo. did he fit it in? Would you swipe here? I think Ancient of Lore is really better and just trade Azur for the Azur. I think it's a better play. I think he's counting damage because if you swipe, you get in like, say, six damage extra. Because you swipe, you get two damage on the face from swipe, uh, four from the Drake, and you also get to play the Sun Fury as well. Um, this match, you don't have to worry about Black Knights. This is Miracle Rogues never run Black Knights, so... They run Sap, though. He already played one sap, and yeah. you're not really sure if he's going to oh, play two. Oh, that's weird. He doesn't play the uh, Sun Fury. Oh, well, he wants more damage. I don't know. Hmm. We should ask him after the game. Gain life. But I think that when you have two Ancient of Lords, you want to play one as soon as possible and keep the other one, especially versus Miracle for the heal. That's what I would do. Just play the first one to draw, get a huge advantage over your opponent, and then use the second one just to heal in situations where Nimsh will burst. Maybe Nimsh will do something like do use a lot of things just to get him at... 18 to get Jano at 18 to be able to win the game and Jano will just use Ancient of Lord to heal and win I think it's pretty much one or the other like you should either play your Ancient of Lore um, Trade and then you know grind it out a little bit get get more cards or go for the strong tempo play And that means play your Sun Fury as well doing like a hybrid between both is just the worst thing. Like, You know taking it out getting in the damage, but but then not following up with the sure. other you know, strong creature. Now Nimsh has a pretty good hand with Auctioneer Conceal, but I don't know if he will be able to use it. Now I think it's a turn where Giano should play Ancient of War, of Lore. He, I think he had to play it last turn though to draw into the combo. I don't know if he's running double Savage or he might just run double Force of Nature, yeah, one Savage one, one That's more possible. stable than double combo in my opinion. But usually you want double combo if you play double Force. He can just play one force for uh, clearing the board and keep the other for the combo. I don't know, It's we should ask him. <laughs> Another thing is he kind of had a read because um, Nimsh played a Drake into a Drake, meaning maybe he didn't have there that many removal spells. Yeah, but the Eviscerate would have popped exactly. up. Exactly, so maybe his Sun Fury would have had a high, high chance of sticking too, you know, 
getting some damage in like that as well. Which should have, again, made that play for the Sun Fury. You'd be sneaking in damage. Yeah, exactly. And then you wouldn't... It, cause this Druid of the Claws is assuming he's going to represent he's that gonna, he has uh, le uh, the he's combo. He's trying to draw in the combo right. this turn or something. But he wouldn't necessarily have to do that if his Sun Fury be able to whack for two turns. I think the entry of Lord Play was better, but in this scenario, Nimsh knows for sure his opponent has the combo. <laughs> and he will try... He has to get rid of the board and heal in his mind. He doesn't know what his opponent has, so... He has the Blade Flurry, right? So... Yeah. <sighs> the Blade Flurry, but he's still one yeah, damage short to remove that. Bit. And that's assuming you even live, so you feel like you have to play Farseer. Yeah, you have to play Farseer and eventually Shadow Step the Farseer if you are going to trade with the Blade. And that's really bad. So that's what, what Nimsh will do. He will either... Um, no, I think that's the only way he could, can click the board. Or he can just sap the Dread of the Claw, trade, Farseer, Shadow Step the Farseer. So yeah, that makes sense too. And then hope he doesn't have like an Innervate or something to finish you off. It's really a lot of mind games in this set. Like, every game. Uh, that is true. So yeah, if you play Sap, your opponent cannot combo. But if he has double Savage Roar... Oh no, he can't. He, he needs Innervate, so... Mm -hmm. If he... he's doing this, he didn't actually play his gadgets in before. Oh, he's, no, he's putting his farce here this turn. Yeah. yeah, he doesn't know that he's opponent. Yeah, he... yeah, yeah. That was a really good play from Giano. He was just telling Nimsh he has the combo while he didn't have it. <laughs> yeah. it's, all, it's always like, even if you don't have it, you're threatening lethal, you know? Yeah, n now Nimsh oh, knows wow. that. Yeah, Nimsh knows that Giano he has actually... the combo. So Shadow step at 15. That was really genius from Giano. Like, <laughs> really good play. There. Especially with the Leroy when you oh. use a Shadow Step there. Oh my god. He top decked the combo. Wow, he did top deck the combo. <laughs> uh, that, that's, that's always crazy. another thing too. But maybe Nim should have just stayed at 15 instead of healing at 18. Because the Shadow Step is pretty important here, I think. He just doesn't want to die to an Innervate. He's just playing around that possibility. His opponent that's does true. have six cards. That's true. Now he will go face with Rudolph the Claw. For sure he's to, to get damage He will force Nim to use the second Shadow Step on the Farseer. To survive. I think what that you want to do all is on maybe what you want to do is um, force of nature, hero power, um, get him to fourteen and take out the three three. Yeah, remove his ability to heal. Yeah, that's a really good play. That way you have also, the combo next yeah, turn. Yeah, that's better because because you remove the three three as well that way. Yeah, that's the best play. And that actually like makes sense with what you just showed too. So that way you just showed combo. But yeah, he's doing it. Your opponent just all now Nimsh knows too. for sure that Giano <laughs> has the combo. <laughs> for and he needs to heal return. or pick up some way to prevent dying from next turn. But imagine just Nimsh uh, didn't play around the combo last turn. He would have been an advantage right now. But you couldn't. You could never do. You could never do <laughs> that. He was forced to play around the combo. Mm. So oh, this he means he plays deck. Colento's deck. Right? Yeah. And it makes sense, they're teammates. Cloud9. I think this version is really strong versus Handlock, but not that good versus other matchups. Because now, for example, versus Druid, why would you play Coli? To give them more chances to draw into the combo? That's or that's basically it. You know, you, you have no other, it's just a, just a dig for your own answers. Or just you don't care what your opponent draws, you exactly. just care you're about you're digging for your own yeah. answers. Nimsh says that, you know, his reasoning was that Miracle is um, you rely a lot on synergy between your cards. You actually do need that big hand size. Now well. he needs Farseer. Yeah, but he's he's not he's oh, done drawing. He's, already, he's yeah. just he's, he, he's, he saw his opponent use one piece. He says, "I'm just gonna have to go for it." Oh, it's he, not good. Oh my god! Oh, if he could, no. I told you. As I said, if he concealed first, he could draw the Farseer and still survive. No, but that he was... wanted to conceal a four-four. Yeah. And well. Yeah. He wasn't sure if he was going to be able to finish it off as well. well. Then why didn't he play the around the combo last turn? <laughs> why didn't he just... Because he, he saw, he he saw one Force of Nature. So maybe he thought only one. But oh. then, you, don't right, you feel maybe. like if they used Force of Nature that frivolously, that he at least had two then? With like six yeah. seven cards in yeah. hand? It's like, why would you use that? And you just sapped a Druid of the Claw, and yeah. he would just probably push that back for four damage instead. Which so, it does them, so... In response, I think yeah. you're right that he shouldn't have made that read. That he should have played around combo again. I mean, obviously, yeah. objectively, well, yes. But another but thing is, playing around combo this situation is only... Like, you have to draw into something to play in combo. Yeah. So that's not even guaranteed, you know? Like, well, you have to... If you want to play around the combo, you should play around the combo. It, it, I don't think it really mattered if he had the Van Cleef under the conceal. It was probably the same thing. He should have you taken know, the risk. Be, it, it might have even been better to not conceal and get a 6-6, six, six, actually. Well, he took the risk of not playing Auctioneer, Conceal, and yeah. a lot of cards... Right. Uh, 
the last turn where he didn't know for sure his opponent had the combo. No, you're right. And now he, he doesn't try stuff, to so survive. So mm. he has one shadow step, so that's twelve plus the thirteen because he has ten plus the three weapon damage, and that would have been maybe the potential way to get lethal. So that is more consistent with it. Nimsh uh, does end up dropping, but Gianna played a really great series, made yeah. a lot of cool decisions that as mind I said, his opponent. I think that the first game pumped up Gianna to not make any mistake again. Yeah. So yeah. That's right. why I feel <laughs> these kind of players, like, if they make a mistake, they will never make it, make, make it again. So really well played for Giano. Another Hong Kong player showing off his skills uh, and moves on to the winner's part of Group C. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to find out what happens more from IAM Hearthstone here in Shenzhen, China.